Yeah, a lot going on out there. Take two. One thing about leasing is leasing is cyclical. Now, the manufacturers won't admit this, but leasing comes and goes. Right now, leasing is hot. But guess what? In a year or two years, it's going to crash, and it's going to stay crashed for about five years, and it's going to come back. Leasing goes up, it crashes and comes back. It's been doing that for the 40 years I've been in the business, and I'm going to tell you it's going to continue to do that because... Manufacturers tend to creep up on their residuals. Manufact leasing does not work for the lessor. It never has. So what happens is they crank up the residuals until finally they take a big loss, and General Motors just recently took a mammoth loss. That's why they created that stupid-ass program. Anybody got a General Motors pro dealership here? Yeah, that's why they created that stupid program that they put in with Shop, Click, and Drive. <laughs> you know, they're trying to dump all those units. They took them to the auction, couldn't give them away, brought them back, and now, now they took control of all your program units. They're overpriced. They, they can't get rid of them because they, they cranked up the residuals and the fleet buybacks were so high. And that happens with every manufacturer. They keep creeping those residuals up, trying to be competitive with each other till finally the whole thing collapses and then leasing goes away for five years, and it comes back for five years. We're on the top of that five-year cycle right now. So don't, don't become so married to leasing that you make it the only way you know how to sell cars. When it's hot, roll with it. But, don't, but understand, it will go away. It's not going to be your forever marketing plan. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Just take a look at history. And history is repeating itself and always will repeat itself. It, it's, it's going to collapse. So be sure that your people don't get so entrenched in leasing they don't know how to sell cars any other way. You follow what I'm saying? Because that does happen. If the salespeople and the managers get over-enthusiastic about leasing, and then all of a sudden leasing dies, you can't get a lender to do it. And right now, let me ask the people in the room a question. How was March... April, and May. How was last month? Okay. Okay. Wasn't exciting, was it? No. We worked, we worked harder to get the same results. You worked a lot harder to get the same results. How about how about Transit Town? Very good March and April. May's been down. May's been down. Matter of fact, I've got people standing on ledges right now looking to jump off because may slowed down on a lot of dealers all over the country. And don't, don't be panicked, but you're going to have to be better than you were to do what you used to do. We're going to sell about 43 million used cars this year. Give or take 43 million. We're going to sell about 17.7, 17.8, whatever this record year, new. So let's just round that off and say we're going to sell 60 million new and used cars. Give or take some decimal points, maybe 62 million, 60, I don't know. If you look at how many licensed drivers there are in the United States, there's only 200 million. Do you realize we've been cramming cars down their throats every, every couple of years? I mean, think about it. We've been selling 60 million cars a year for the last couple of years. Everybody that wants one's got one, and they're not breaking. They're staying on the road for 11 years. If you'll remember in 08, when the, when the whole U.S. economy collapsed, the car business collapsed two years before that. The car business collapsed in 2006, not 2000. We had already collapsed when the economy collapsed. And we didn't collapse because of the economy. We collapsed because the market reached saturation. You can only sell so many people so many cars, and they're saying the millennials aren't buying quite as many as we did. You know, we, we're growing up now with the Uber generation. 
So understand, you're going to have to be better than you were to be where you used to be. And if you're going to do business going into the years ahead of us, you're going to have to take that business away from a competitor that already has it, and Google is the battlefield. If you're not winning in Google, you are losing. Because it is strictly a marketing game today. Everybody got that? You can grow or you can die, but you cannot stay where you are. That's a Ziegler quote. You can grow or you can die, but you cannot stay where you are. And if you're going to do business today, you're going to have to take that business away from a consumer that already has it. Well, Ziegler, what's that got to do with F&I? It's got a lot to do with F&I because... F&I is going to inherit the industry. The majority of consumers today are payment buyers. You know, I see people advertising price point. Nobody's buying price point. I don't care if you're buying a $140,000 i8 BMW, you are a payment buyer. You're a payment buyer. The overwhelming majority of people are buying based on financial considerations, not on the price of the car, not how much they got for the trade. They're buying it based on monthly payment consideration. So understand, price doesn't matter. I see dealers advertising price point. You know, why are you doing that? Because True Car made you. People don't care about all that. It's about the monthly payment amount. It's about the finances. Why do consumers negotiate so hard on a car? Because they think they have to get a better deal to get a better payment. They think they have to get a better deal to get a better payment. So people trying to do away with the F&I department, yeah, the F&I department is going away. But you know what's so interesting about that? The sales manager position is a position that's going to die, not ours. We are, we are more likely to assume their job than they are to assume ours. That's why I'm so proud to see you here because a sales manager today without finance background is a dinosaur being sucked down in the tar pits as you eat the last brown shriveled leaves off the trees. <laughs> if you don't learn F&I, you're going to be gurgling any time now. <laughs> Just a fact. Most sales managers learn their job by watching somebody that got fired. <laughs> I got more skills, more schools, more specialized training than anybody in the dealership except the technicians that turn the wrenches. More skills, more schools, more specialized training. Only the technicians in the service department got more training than I do. I'm the highest profit center in the dealership and I protect the dealer legally. You know what I had to protect the dealer from? The shit the sales managers do. <laughs> Think about that. Is that true or false? Absolutely. <laughs> I got to be the one that says, no, stop. And they're going, go, go, go. And one thing about the sales department, a whole team of people could gang up on a consumer for four hours and not make a deal. And nobody says shit about that. Let one come bouncing out of your office one time. <laughs> Is that true or false? <laughs> You're the only manager in the dealership that has a close with a stopwatch. <laughs> I mean, you got a salesman with their nose up against the glass pointing at a Rolex. <laughs> Excuse me. It's a great job. Now I want to get into the text of the text. Let's get into the learning part of this course. I've done enough entertainment for right now. Page six. This book in front of you is the 14th time I've rewritten this book. This book is as fresh as last month. I'm continually rewriting this book. This book is fresh. A couple years ago, I realized 
that my good friend Jackie B. Cooper, and Jackie was, was a friend of mine. He, he never stayed at my house. I mean, it wasn't that kind of, he's a business friend. But my good friend Jackie B. Cooper, the greatest trainer that ever lived in the automobile industry, he died in 1991, or 2001. He died in 2001. And he was relatively broke. Even though he had made more money than anybody in the history of the training industry in our business. Because he never rewrote the book. He never moved into the future. He never went with the new techniques. I've had to reinvent myself several times. And as the industry reinvented itself, I've had to reinvent things about the industry as well. It's not what it was, and it's never going to be that way again. If you're stuck in the past, you're, you are never going to survive in this industry. You've got to be willing to change. Now, some of the things I did when I was an F&I manager, if I did those things today, I'd be in jail. <laughs> because that's the way F&I was taught and done. I've got, I've got photographs on my Facebook page of consumers doing push-ups to qualify for credit life insurance. <laughs> that might not fly today, do you think? <laughs> you know, but the point is, you have to move with the times. And the, and the times are, are now, the road to the sale didn't die. The road to the sale evolved. And we put technology into it. Technology, you know, if you listen to the techies today, salespeople are obsolete, F&I people are obsolete. No, we're not. But the truth of the matter is, technology is now part of the way we sell cars. Technology is part of what we do. And we have to learn to go with that technology. But one thing I tell managers, Never apologize for your position. You are not the sales manager's secretary. You are not a clerk. And I'm certainly never going to be disrespected by a salesperson. Like I say, I've got more skills, more schools, more specialized training than anybody in the dealership except the technicians. I'm one of the highest profit centers in the dealership, and I will be respected. But you're going to have to take that. Nobody's going to give you that respect. You've got to earn that respect. You've got to show performance. Do you see what I'm saying? And you are not a finance manager. 